Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon Geeky Sparkle sitting videos out today because she's out and about. She'll be back tomorrow. Probably just be her this weekend, mostly. Uh, we'll see if I got time, but um, we're going to talk about the Acolyte. Uh, I don't really care about the Acolyte. I don't really care to talk about it, but this is uh, very fascinating to see Leslie Headland out there making some pretty big claims about the, uh, the Acolyte. Uh, she's claiming that the series was tonally inspired by Cowboy Bebop. I, I would say probably inspired by the Netflix version of Cowboy Bebop that was canceled days after the first season dropped. <laughs> you know, thank God before we had to sit through a season of Ed. Uh, we're going to talk about that, and then we're going to talk about how she believes that uh, the final fight scene topped the Phantom Menace in the Matrix. Like, she really does think her show is the best thing ever. And she will not stop talking about how it's the bestest Star Wars ever. And uh, I think most people who have watched it will disagree with her. <laughs> it is not the bestest Star Wars. Most people don't even think it's passable Star Wars. The vast majority of people think it's terrible Star Wars. Uh, even if you're not, not uh, following all the drama around this show, the daily drama, the daily uh, YouTube dish on on the acolyte uh it's very clear that that uh, it has not resonated with people it's not getting the views that disney probably hoped for i think they green lit it or just let it go because it was already in the pipeline and uh probably would have cost more to kill it i don't know if she had a kill fee or not but it feels like something they just kind of crapped out to get it out of the way to move on to other things that being said, we're going to talk about it. So before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. Uh, yeah, go out to Patreon, patreon.com slash clownfish TV. Uh, you can get podcasts early. We're actually doing other podcasts. We do a podcast. You know that podcast, podcast, podcast. I got to say that in the, the video. Uh, we do have a uh, D-Res. D-Res is uh, coming back. We're going to be doing that. We have an audio version of Clownfish TV. You can find that as well. And we're just trying to build a little, little bit of a life raft just in case the YouTube boat sinks. So uh, check it out, guys. The support's greatly appreciated. All right. So I got to give a hat tip to Peter Pischke, who posted this. This is coming from Bounding in the Comics. The acolyte creator Leslie Headland says Disney's Star Wars series was tonally inspired by Cowboy Bebop. Okay, then. She offered insight into the widely panned Star Wars series production during a post-season finale interview given to Collider uh, Access Media. In reference to her past pair of admissions as made during her previous Acolyte-centric interviews, she said the visual depiction of the Space Witch Coven's magic usage was inspired by Crimson Peak. So, yeah, uh, in other words, when the Mother Witch inexplicably turns into Black smoke which has never happened in star wars to the best of my knowledge <laughs> like what <laughs> and black smoke that can apparently be stabbed with a lightsaber right and uh also crouching tiger hidden dragon as as influences but now but now cowboy bebop and samurai uh shampoo uh shinichiro wantanabe did i pronounce that right i hope i did uh those were big references not visually but tonally especially Cowboy Bebop, bouncing back and forth between Spike's backstory, which is incredibly tragic and heart-wrenching, and then his fun buoyancy when they do the episodic episodes. He feels like a Han Solo coded character. So totally, totally those were references. No, I would say that they got the, the tone of uh, live-action Netflix Cowboy Bebop. They got that down. I'm still trying to figure out where the money went for this thing. Like, this is... This is one of the most expensive shows they've done on Disney Plus, right? It was it wasn't like almost two hundred million dollars or some crazy amount of money, and I don't see it. It looks like a Star Wars fan film. It does. It looks like the kind of like not even not even a good one, like a mid Star Wars fan film from about ten years ago. I do not understand where the money went for this. Turning her attention to other other influences, uh, Leslie Headland said. Osha and the stranger's relationship was like Dracula, uh, Bram Stoker's Dracula by Francis Ford Coppola, which I know is different from the book. The film is one of my favorite films. Yeah, it's not bad. 
Uh, so basically everything but Star Wars. Everything but Star Wars influenced this. She just goes on. Uh, Jane Eyre. Uh, let's see here. We've got Demon Slayer. Roroni Kenshin as influences. Here's um here's another article this came out today again bounding in the comics. Uh, the Acolyte showrunner Leslie Headland Blue Star Wars series final fight tops the Phantom Menace in the Matrix. <sighs> now, those both came out in the same year and they were both kind of amazing, I guess when they came out. Uh, it, let me explain. The Phantom Menace I know has been derided over the years. But when it came out, we actually got to see more than one Jedi, more than two old Jedi or an inexperienced Jedi fighting an old cybernetic Jedi. We got to see actual Jedi fighting actual Sith at their peak. And it was pretty cool. The lightsaber battles were amazing, regardless of what you think about the movie. The lightsaber battles were great. The finale with Obi-Wan, Qui-Gon, and Darth Maul was awesome. It was very cool. And then the music on top of it, it was cool. It was amazing. It was worth seeing the movie just for that. And the pod racing scenes I thought were pretty good too. But it was worth going to the theater just to, just to see that. And then we got The Matrix, which we hadn't seen anything like that before. And going into The Matrix fresh was amazing because I didn't know anything about The Matrix other than Keanu Reeves was in it. He wore a trench coat. Uh, I went, I think, opening weekend – just because I'm like, well, it looks like Blade Runner. looks like science fiction. I don't know. It looks pretty cool. It's got Keanu Reeves. People say it's pretty good. And this is before we had like massive spoilers all over the internet. And it was amazing. It, it blew my mind when it first came out. We saw action scenes that we'd never seen the likes of on screen before. So there's a lot of really cool visuals in 1999. And we were just coming into... CGI, and we we're just coming into the fact that like anything you could imagine in your head could be filmed or created using CGI. And uh, but to, to compare to compare the accolades, uh, lethargic fight scenes to to that. Um, they said the uh, the lightsaber throws and anime inspired dashes. Well, not the best fight ever put to film is admittedly one of the better scenes. Yeah, people say it wasn't terrible, but I, I to put it on the same level as Qui Gon Obi Wan versus Darth Maul, or you know, pretty much any fight scene in the Matrix is is God. She really thinks she put the best thing ever out there into the world. According to Headland, the showdown was not one of the best fights of the series, but of Hollywood overall. Speaking to her, speaking to her creative process again with Collider. This is the same interview. Um, second year director Chris Cowan and I, we were shooting for immortality. We were like, we are effing going for it. We want to top Duel of the Fates from the Phantom Menace, and we want, and we wanted to top the train station in the Matrix. We will settle for nothing less. I will leave it up to the viewer as to whether or not we achieve that. She added, but in my heart of hearts, I was like, we achieved that. As far as I'm concerned. Okay, so here's 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 the thing. Um, one of my favorite movies of all time is Ed Wood. Have you guys ever seen Ed Wood? Johnny Depp, Tim Burton, amazing movie. I love the movie. It's it's definitely in my top five favorite movies. And the thing about Ed Wood is he wasn't a good director. He wasn't very good. He didn't have a knack for it. He didn't have an eye for it. He really is considered one of the worst directors of all time. But he thought he was a fucking genius. Ed Wood thought he was amazing. And I'm thinking that a lot of these people working in Hollywood today, the difference between Leslie Headland and like Francis Ford Coppola is that Francis Ford Coppola knows when shit's not good. <laughs> you know, he knows when it's not good. He he revised George Lucas's original uh, draft of Star Wars, if I remember correctly. And, and smart people know that they can always improve. You, you can put out, you know, even in comics, you can be like an Eisner award winning when it meant something comic creator. And you can put out like the most amazing comic ever. And people can be like, yeah, this is the best thing ever. If you're serious about it and you're actually good at what you do, you, you take a look at it and you're like, yeah, that's shit. Can I do better next time? And I think everybody needs to be like that. And you can kind of see it with, these, these older professionals, these older directors, creators, whatever, they're kind of like, 
yeah, you know, I did the thing. Um, I want to do better next time. And people be like, well, that was amazing. They're like, yeah, well, it didn't really turn out the way I wanted it to. Because you you want to stay hungry. You you always want to be hungry and you always want to look at your own stuff and be critical of it and be like, yeah, it was it was okay. You know, I'm reasonably happy with it, but uh, I want it to be 100 times better next time. And that, that's what you need to do. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm leery of any creator who comes out and is like, yes, we, I did the bestest thing ever on my first try. First take, boom, in the can. It's a wrap. Because that's not how, how it actually works. Anyone who's, who's actually uh, creating art, an artiste, is going to be hypercritical of their stuff. And they're sure as hell not going to be like, yes, I did better than The Matrix. And I did better than, than that uh, fight scene in The Fan Mess on my first try. It was amazing. I'm amazing. And it's just like Cowboy Bebop, which is considered one of the best anime series of all time because I'm just that good. Um, yeah, uh, the lack of self-awareness and humility is astounding. I mean, I, this is considered one of the worst Star Wars series of all time. You, you can like it. I, I don't like, look, I don't consider any Disney Star Wars canon. I think it's all expensive corporate fan fiction um nostalgia bait in some cases and i just don't consider any of it can george lucas doesn't consider it can he said he made six movies and that's it yeah i guess i guess you could consider the clone wars cartoon that 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 is actually considered what g canon i actually i'm gonna be honest i don't even consider the clone wars cartoon truly canon because there are some things that happened in the clone wars cartoon that i think broke the canon between episode two and three you know, uh, Anakin having multiple run-ins with Count Dooku that didn't seem to to jive with the movies. Um, even Ahsoka, you can like the character. I think she's a good character. I think she was a good character in the show, but she's never mentioned. You know what I'm saying? Like it it seemed like by the logic of the movies that only Jedi Masters were able to take Padawans. At least that's the way it seemed. And he was not a master, so he never had a Padawan. He wasn't capable of training anyone else but no 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 he had a whole secret uh he had a secret padawan and then she just happened to get gone before the next movie i don't know i mean it's just my personal opinion but uh and now people are going to jump the comments be like but george signed off i'm like yeah i know george signed off on it personally i think six movies those six movies are canon and that's it to me um and some of the legend stuff is is pretty good even though george didn't like that but uh disney star wars is shit and I think comparing it to Netflix Cowboy Bebop is probably the way to go. I don't see it getting a second season, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. If Disney wants to keep burning money, I don't think they're in a place to, to do it. Greenlight some more of this. Uh, so I'm going to wrap it up, guys. Please subscribe. We'll talk later.